Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Red, White, and Burnouts. And today, we're going to be test driving this 2022 BMW M550i. And there's a little twist on this. We actually own this car and we're going to be trading it out at the dealership for another car. So we figured we'd do a little review for you guys and you guys get to find out what we're trading in for and let us know what you think. Let's do it. Take one. Okay, so how long have we owned this car? Four months. Four months. That Four doesn't months. mean that we don't like it, guys. We actually love this car. We test drove a BMW M5, the newer ones. Yeah. What year was it? Uh, 19. It was 2019. We test drove M5 Comp, and we love M5s. Yeah. We, they're amazing. We wish we could have bought one, but we decided on this because the M5, the newer ones, they just weren't comfortable. Even we the non-comp. Like Even them. the non-comp. Even was, the non-comp. It was really uncomfortable to drive, and we decided that this was the most like the older M5s. It reminds me of E39 rides. M5. Yeah. And I've owned two E60 M5s, the V10 cars, and uh, they're all great cars. Mm -hmm. But the newer M5s, man, I want to love it. We want one. We I want, want one. one. But it's rock hard suspension and comfort mode. Yeah. It's fast, great. Yeah, absolutely. But guys, it's too big to race anymore. You're not going to take it on. Yeah. A, like a lot of guys are not going to HPDE that car. It's just too big. So why is it so race oriented? I don't. I don't know. It needs to be <laughs> dual personality, right? I agree. But that's what this is. And that's why we went with the M550i. Yeah. And this car is actually better than the newer M5s and the M5 comps. And it sounds amazing. It does. It's a little quieter, but when you get it going, that it was, sounds great. That was in comfort mode. If you put it in sport, the cool thing is, is you you actually do get pops and burbles i mean i know what people don't necessarily love that and i don't mean yeah. obnoxious pops and burbles but like it obviously it has an active exhaust so it sounds fantastic it does it really does and the sound of the engine is just one aspect of it yeah but i mean the transmission calibration the tuning of it in sport mode it's just like wow it's it good it sounds really good it's really good all it around is. it's a well-balanced car it's kind of like an e39 or an e60 m5 i think it looks better than the e60 m5 i agree and I think it looks it looks and drives so well. Like we're gonna go through the twisty here, and it's just flat, and you can roll in the throttle. I think this thing's a sleeper. It's a little. It's insanely fast. Yeah. Considering it's stock. It seems like an executive sedan, and it is, but it's also I feel like no one expects it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. So I think the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the interior of the car. Um, I think the interior of this car is very executive-like, but also at the same time, we've driven other M550i's, older ones, like 2018's. I think that's the one we last first test drove. drove. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was much more executive looking, yeah. like with um, with the wood. Like brown wood. The woods. brown wood, it was, it was ugly. Oof. BMW, I don't know why you do that, but. This one doesn't have that. What is this one? It's kind of a charcoal colored. Yeah, it's wood, much It's better. a wood grain, but it's charcoal colored. Yeah. And it looks great, but you have it to does. really look. If you're getting an M550i and you want it to be sporty, you really got to look at the interior color yeah. selection. And it's it's hard to find, but they I do think exist. You have to be picky about which you one do. to buy. You do. Otherwise, you get the saloon executive package. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. I made that up. But. I do really like the interior of this car, but I will say, every time that I've gone in it to just go like drive it and I'm in a hurry, you're gonna agree with this. The car play oh is God. so annoying. Gosh. They they're in for the infotainment system on this thing. It's so difficult to like like just turn on Apple CarPlay. Like yeah. the buttons, like to try and get another phone connected oh, when man. there's another one connected. It's yes. so over. If you're the listening, top, BMW, pick. Just pick. It's so annoying. Just it pick. drives me insane. Put an icon. Insane. Like Bob's yeah. Bob's iPhone. Boom. Where Sophia's is iPhone. Play? Boom. Yeah. Where is it? It's, it's it's annoying. You got wait. You got to go to the car menu. Then you got to go to the com button. Yeah. Then you got to go mobile devices, and then they'll all be connected. They'll That's all the be problem. Connected. And but it's like who's connected? Who's connected to what? Well, this is this one's through Wi-Fi. This one's through Bluetooth. Yeah. This, like calm down, man. Just I just want to pick a phone to use with CarPlay. And that's the most distracting thing about this car. Yeah. Out of everything, like that is the only thing that yeah. I really, really don't like about the car. I will say though, um, back when we had our other M5, what year was that one? Uh, the black last one. Last one was a 2010. It was a 2010 V10. I loved that car. I learned how to drive in that car, but of course it didn't have Bluetooth. So this car is way better for that reason. So what I would do is I would take- What? I can't hear you over this. 
that's 350 miles per hour right there. Right there. We didn't. How long did it take? Four seconds. Yeah, it's insane. I just timed it's it insanely in my brain. fast. Sorry. Yeah. Mildly interrupting you. <laughs> what I would do is I would take a JBL speaker and put it in the car when I would drive it uh, because what are you gonna do? You're not gonna be able to listen to music. Yeah, the Bluetooth didn't work for music. Bluetooth. It worked for your phone only in that car. It made yeah, no sense. It didn't make any sense. That's crazy. It's very yeah. German. I think German is definitely up to their game, but they're still they still don't get it. The Germans. They still don't understand. They don't get it. Make it simple, guys. They still don't get it. Make it simple. Yeah. What do you think of the interior of this car? I love it. Like it's it's not elegant or overly yeah. you know, there's not a billion buttons, it's pretty clean. Um, it's brilliant. Like interior wise, it's quiet, it's comfortable. The seats are a, probably the best yes, thing. They're like, comfortable. They're amazing. Yeah. And then if you put it in sport mode, they'll they'll hug you. Yeah. And so that's fantastic. Like, you know, look, it's a great car all around. I think drive wise, interior I'm sorry, interior wise, it's 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 awesome. It is awesome. I mean it's not the most flashy, but if you like clean yeah. and functional, that's it's a driver's machine. No one sees it coming. No. Which are usually the best kind of cars. It is. So, it's a sleeper. It is a sleeper. It's definitely a sleeper. Yeah. I think where they put the shifter, I think the placement of it is perfect. Because we, when we were um, debating on what kind of sports sedan we wanted to purchase, we went and looked at a newer CTSV, And the placement of the shifter is just like right in the way. Like you can't relax your hand, yep. your arm. It makes no sense. So this car, they had it figured out. And I yeah. remember in the M5, it was in the way too. Yeah, it was great. So, this is this is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they got, the Germans got it figured out. <laughs> but drive-wise, this is probably the best driving car that you can that you can buy. Yeah. Meaning how, how it handles, how when you do turn in, I mean, it does have four wheel steer. So like when you turn in, the turn in of this car is so good. It's just where the wheel goes, the car the placement car, yeah. is. And whether you're on, I think, you know, this is not really ever going on a road course unless you're really <laughs> bored. But on any kind of street driving, if you want to enjoy your car, it's literally as simple. Sport mode, have fun. You could, you know, you push the button, but the steering is so good and the car is just responsive and you're getting 526 horsepower, which is definitely underrated, by the way. Definitely underrated. No way. This car absolutely would run mid 11s, low 11s. And it's all-wheel drive. Yeah. So, you know, and it's rear bias, so it's still fun. You can turn off traction control, and you can get sideways. I didn't realize that until I That's almost created a situation. Funny. But outside of that, you know, look, sport mode, manual, have fun. And the paddles are great. Like, yes. sport mode, push the button for sport. I like sport plus. And that's pretty much it. So you push a traction control button one time, left foot brake, Right foot gas. <laughs> wow. That's 60. That was impressive. That was impressive. I mean, that's like three seconds and some change to 60. Yeah. It's crazy how easy it is to just fly in this car. I like that it's so comfortable, but it like puts you back. Man, the launch is great. Yeah, the launch is really good. Like, I don't care what kind of sports car you have. If it's two wheel drive, you're not hanging with this on a launch. No. Like, it's just not going to happen. No. So, you know, we've driven lots of cars that launch. And on the street, repeatable, fast launches, this is the this is the best one by far. I agree. Okay. Let's take off. This way? Yep. All right. Got it. It just hugged me. Yep. It just gave me a little hug. Gave you a hug. Welcome to a fast car, Sophia. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're funny. <laughs> I actually don't drive this thing very much, but I will say one time, one thing that I've noticed every time I do drive it is the brake pedal is so sensitive. It is. It's, I am not used to it. I'm used to like a, like a nice firm brake pedal and I can like push the brakes and get the response that I want. But this thing is touchy. Is. Wow. This brake pedal, I'm really not used to it. Yeah. All right. I got to pay attention now. Sorry, bud. Didn't mean to cut you off there, but I'm gonna go faster than you. <laughs> I will say it doesn't as handle. I mean, I'm going I'm to used, sport mode. I I'm, see what you're doing. I'm here. used to better handling, but there's no such thing. This is a BMW. There is. We're we have to. We're gonna see if we can compare this to. Um, 
a I Porsche know. Panamera. I wonder why you want to do that. I wonder why I'd want why to do that. Want it's do not like I'm thing. used to driving one of those or anything. A little bit. Just a little bit. It does feel a little uh, looser than I'm used to. But. So what you're saying is it's not Porsche level handling. No. There's nothing. Nothing will compete with Porsche level handling unless you get like up in the supercars, I feel like. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Unless uh, you've got like a 911 or something. But, but that is Porsche level handling, though. Exactly. For a street car, for a street cruiser. <laughs> it just wants to go. This is like an E39 M5. It really is. If you're debating between an M5 and an M550i or what to get, man, just go drive the M550i, push some buttons, launch that sucker. You've it's, got yourself an M5. It's a rocket. It's faster and quicker than my old M5s, no question. Not even, like, not even a question. And honestly, how much more of this do you need on the street? Power wise, than what this produces, and if you really want more, it can be tuned. It can be tuned, yeah. It, it bothers me because you're like, oh man, I drive an yeah, M550i, want... and you're like, yeah. what's that? Oh, yeah. if you say like, oh man, I got an M5. Okay. Everybody knows what an M5 is. Yeah. So then, then you get in this weird situation with people, conversation wise, where like, well, it's like an M5. Yeah. But it's better than well, an why M5. Why didn't you get the M5? You know, you sound like <laughs> that guy, and you're like, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. I just, you know. It's like we would never drive the M5 if we uh, bought the M5 because we'd have be... a bunch of neck problems. Yep. Yeah. Honestly, I can say that I would drive this car daily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I wanted something more like... This thing packs a punch. But if I wanted yeah. something more rowdy and sports-like, I would not pick this. But at the same time, I could say that I'm more of like a sporty sedan kind of person. Yeah. And I'd be fine with it. But I would really have to get used to this brake pedal because it's weird. Yeah. But I know that's like the newer thing. got to figure too. nothing. Ooh. There's no perfect car. But... This is pretty close. Yeah, this is pretty close. <laughs> Whoopsie. Boop. Cut that out. Cut that part out. Cut that part out. It, well, it doesn't even feel like you're going that fast, okay? No. And this is a 2022, 15,000 miles, under warranty, for the same price <laughs> oh, as an out of warranty M5. That you will not know any difference in terms of speed. You're going to go, okay, the M5 is faster. It is. But it, your daily use, it's not going to matter. I would say the throttle, this is off topic, yeah. but the throttle response in this is better than the throttle response in my Panamera Turbo, but the handling is better in the Panamera than in this. That's a great point, and I believe the throttle response is better in this because this is a torque converter based automatic, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the the Porsche Panamera has a dual clutch. Yeah, but I do love the dual clutch. Yeah. It's just, it's really cool. It's I good. do love the dual clutch a it's lot. It's good. It's good. But I also love a dual clutch, and if you put this in manual mode with paddles, yeah. they're really close. Yeah. I mean, shift speeds are, they're fast. I think it's just based on what you want at that point. I agree. Time for some final impressions. Sophia, handling. 10 out of 10? 8 out of 10? What do you think? I would give the handling... Uh, 6.75. Wow, seven. that's really... Seven. Wow. But I'm used to... I'm used to, like, the Porsche suspension and stuff. Fair. Do you know what I mean? Fair. Yeah. If you are not used to a Porsche suspension... I'd give it, like, an eight, eight and a half. Okay. It's, it's, it's not bad. I don't want you guys to think we're driving, like, the Challenger, like, what we just... <laughs> oh, wow. Viewed. You mean roly-poly. Roly like roly-poly. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. No. It's definitely not a roly-poly. No. No. I love the dual personality. You know, sport mode is pretty flat. Is it M5 flat? No. No. But that's but good. It's good. It's I good actually thing. think this is, like I said, E39 M5 territory all day long. If you like that car, you'd love this car. So yeah. handling, 8 out of 10 for you. I would give it an 8 out of 10. Did you say 8? 8 and a half. 8. All right, whatever. 8 and a half. Acceleration. Acceleration, this thing gets like a 10. I agree. There's I no love the acceleration in this thing. It is so good. Like, you don't even know. It doesn't even feel like you're going however fast you're going. Yeah, it's and it's like, addictive. Like, it is addictive. It's this, like, let's go more. Okay, what else do we need to talk about? Braking. Braking. I think I'm just not used to the brakes. I don't know. I think the calipers look huge, it's, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. Because it's an M car. It should have that, which yep. I'm glad it does. But I think it would take me a while to get used to the braking. It took me a while, and it's I'm still not quite used to weird. the touchiness. But at the same time, the performance yeah. of the brakes. Oh, they're great. Yeah. Yeah. They, they The brakes work. Let's put it that way. I feel like they're like a nine. Eight? I would give it. I would give it like an eight, eight, eight and a half. Eight nine. They're definitely like amazing brakes. Okay. Yeah, 300%. I agree. I, obviously, I bought it. I yeah. mean, 
cross shop that could have bought either. I agree. Yeah. Overall, I still think this is probably the best one in the segment to pick. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable. It's fast. Yeah. It's I. Uh, the drivability of this car overall is just amazing. There's really nothing to complain about. I agree 100%. Except for the car play and the braking something to get used to. You do have to get used to the brakes. Yeah. The car play is fine. You can figure that out over time. The car play you can figure out. Just yeah. don't have five different people try yeah. and connect. So we talked earlier about what we're actually doing today. We did. Where are we headed? We are headed down to um, here in Florida and we are going to go pick up a new car. Well, it's not new to us, but it's new to you guys. New to the, we're, anybody watching. We're very familiar with this car. We are. <laughs> they couldn't be more opposite. No, they could not be more opposite. Some of you are going to be excited, and some of you are going to be like, what is going on? What were you thinking, maybe? What were you thinking? I don't know. There's always a reason. Always a reason. Let's find out. All right. All right. Hey guys, we are now in the new vehicle. Well, it's new to you guys, but not to us. Do we want to tell them what it is? It's semi-new to us. Semi-new. And how it's new is because we actually owned and built this car um, in 2020. Yeah. And we were one of the few people to get the first we got lucky. car of this. So it's a C8 Corvette. We got a C8 Corvette. We got a C8 Corvette and we got the C8 Corvette that we built mm -hmm. brand new in 2020 and it's kind of funny how it all turned out so we bought this brand new in 2020 we had it built we got into this VIP 40 list like 40 people who were the coolest VIPs but we weren't cool enough to get on it no so they <laughs> called us and they're like hey we had an opening in the VIP list um would you like it and I'm like yes put us on it so we were lucky to get one of the earliest C8s that came out and it's it's been an awesome car. So mm -hmm. we had it for about two years. We did some testing with it and there was no tunability on it at the time. So, you know, aside from putting like a piggyback ECM on, you couldn't really get any, you could, there was no tuning on it. So um, we sold it, we moved on to another vehicle, uh, did our Hellcat course and then sold the Hellcat, <clears throat> bought the BMW. Here we are. Now here we are, guys. So why did we decide to get a C8 again? Well, the C8s are tunable now. And so our customers are asking for us to teach them how to tune them, which is great. So I went looking on Auto Trader. <laughs> As one does. And <laughs> our old car happened to pop up. for sale. First one. Same exact one. This yeah. is the one that we own. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I drove this car, I think I was like 16 years old. It's which is crazy. It's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're stoked. We got our old car back. We actually put the bulk of the mileage on the car. We did. Whoever yeah. owned it between us and us didn't put very much mm -hmm. mileage on it. So it was actually in nicer condition than, than when we when sold we, it. Yeah, you know, for sure. They, they cleaned it, they garage kept it, and yeah. I'm like, well, thanks for holding on to our car. Yeah. And it was super cool. We told the guy, like, hey, you know, we're buying our old car back, and he was stoked. Yeah. Because he was a cool Corvette dude. Yeah, yeah. definitely, for yeah. sure. So what are we going to do with the car, Sophia? We are going to give you guys a little car review but we are also going to be putting it against my new American car because I'm also getting rid of my German car, the Porsche. So you guys will be getting a car review and then the C8 and whatever car that's coming next will be going head to head. That's right, I'm excited because yeah. honestly, I know what both cars are and you know what both cars I are. I do, yeah. But I don't know which one's gonna be faster on track. Uh, I've been on this in track. Yeah, on, yeah. And I've been on the other one in track. Yeah. So. I think it's going to be pretty close. It's going to be really I think it will be. Ridiculously close. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm stoked. Me too. <laughs> wow. It's quick. It is quick. Alright guys, we are headed home in our new C8 and we are so excited to show you what car comes next that's going to go against this car. So we'll see you in the next episode and stay tuned. Boop. <laughs> Boop.
boop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't. Now you made me forget what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so. Oh, that sounds like a little YouTube closing. <laughs> Just a sec, just a sec, guys. <laughs> Cannot reach the pedals. Because, <laughs> you know, he's just so tall. So tall. Who sat here? Gosh. It's me. I just got out of seat. I really like this steering wheel. I do too. I think it's... I think they... I can't. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm struggling a little bit. Struggling. <laughs> Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.